Hi, my name is Sophie Edward and I'm one of the staff members for CS50 this year. Um, and one of our students, Stunegg, is going to talk about his project. Hi. Uh, so my project is the beginnings of an unsuitable chair. Unsuitable chair, okay. Yeah. So the way this chair would eventually work mm -hmm. is that the back of the chair would follow you no matter where you are around the chair, mm -hmm. making it impossible to sit in. Okay. Um, and to do that, I'm going to have some cameras hidden in the chair running face detection. Okay. Um, whenever they pick up a face, they would tell a motor to turn the chair um, so the back is always following you. So the beginnings of this is just one camera, uh, and the way it works, you can see here, I programmed it to pick up the nearest face, and if it is in the center, mm -hmm. um, the motor will do nothing like that. So, and are the two red lines on that's, the That's the, the range in which um, it's cons the face is considered to be in the center of the frame. Okay. Um, and the red line down the middle of my face is the middle of my face. Okay. Uh, so if I'm on one side of those lines, the motor will turn uh, to the left. If I'm on the other, it'll turn to the right, so that when the camera's connected to the motor, the camera's always following. Oh, wow, thanks. Um, so it's not actually running on my Mac, it's running on this little computer here called a Raspberry Pi. Okay, let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, yeah, so this is just, you can, you can buy these, They're, they are just a computer, okay. um, but without the display and the keyboard and everything, but you can buy those and plug it in. Uh, and then this is just a little camera module that I got to go with it. Um, my Python face detection program mm -hmm. is running on this Pi. Okay. And it works with these little pins here called GPIO pins. Mm -hmm. And basically, if my face is on one side of the frame, uh, one of these pins will fire. If it's on the other, the other will fire. Okay. That data travels down here to this little PCB board I made. Um, this is just a simple DC motor circuit. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have your power line to the battery. You have, this is power coming to the motor here. Um, and then this is to program it. I wrote a C program that programmed this little piece of equipment here called a microcontroller. Okay. Um, what the microcontroller is doing is taking information from these GPIO pins um, and then outputting it to this little piece here that's called the motor driver. Mm -hmm. Inside that is a thing called an H-bridge that switches the direction uh, of the current flowing through the motor. Okay. So the effect of that is this. Oh, you have a bit of a demonstration, nice. Let's see if we can get it to work. So if I'm on one side of the frame of this camera, the motor's turning one direction. If I move, I'm in the center, nothing happens. If I go to the other side, it goes the other way. That's pretty impressive. Um, that is really yeah. cool. So I just need three more of those, four more of those, build the chair, and then get the mechanism done, working, done. and we're done. Yeah. So what inspired this exactly? Because this isn't exactly something we cover in CS50. I mean, we certainly do C, we do low level, um, but hardware is it really in the course material. So what inspired you? Um, well, so uh, my concentration is VES, which is art. Okay. Um, and I wanted to make a fun installation. Mm -hmm. And the idea came from uh, me thinking about what I wanted in a gallery space or a museum. Um, I was thinking about when I was a kid, my parents would bring us uh, to museums, galleries, and I have five younger siblings, and we would oh. be bored as hell. <laughs> um, our feet were tired, we just want to go home, but my parents would take forever to go through. And so what would happen is every time we got into a new room, we would look for the chair. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always a chair that the, uh, the guard or, or whatever museum attendant would sit in, uh, and we'd all race to sit in this chair. And I was thinking, what if I could make something um, for board people in galleries to, make it to have like a little riddle, a little little puzzle, um, right. and that would be this chair. So you'd think your like salvation has come at last. You <laughs> get there just to be thwarted. That's um, fantastic. Yeah. So would the long run goal be to actually get this uh, installed in one of the Harvard art exhibits? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, yeah, somewhere, somewhere. I'm That's not sure yet. I have to build it first. I'm impressed. And did you know hardware before this semester, or did you no. just pick it up over? No. Your yeah, career? I'm. Uh, yeah. Picked it all up. It was a ton of ton of googling. A ton of googling. Yep. <laughs> and like, I, yeah, I, I got some help from the. There's a physics lab in the science center, and there's good okay, people so in there who are helping me out. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So a lot of it was just kind of self-discovery, your sure. own inspiration Absolutely. going for it. And yeah. then, so for the chair, you said you just need a few more motors to get it up and running. I need a few more cameras. You can make so cameras. Okay. the reason for that is that this camera has a limited field of view, mm -hmm. but obviously somebody can approach the chair from any direction. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd have. This camera, the one that's trying to align a face in the center, would be on the back of the chair. Because the back is what you want centered on you. Okay. Um, and then I would potentially have two in the front, 
that uh, if a face was detected in one of those, mm -hmm. the motor would work to get the face off screen left or screen right, depending on which one. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, and so hopefully with three cameras, I might need four to get a full 360 degrees of view, um, but it would just be a chain. Like the cameras would pass the face along. Okay. That makes sense. Wow, I'm excited to hear about this project. I hope it works out well. I hope Me you keep too. pursuing it. And then you never know, you can see your name in a Harvard art exhibit and then you can bring your siblings again. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doug. No worries, no worries. Thank you. Yeah.